fellow students, Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here. I'm here with Linda Mays, one of our um, violin check members. She's uh, in a solid tone class. I hold these every week for members uh, to help them with their technique. So yeah, Linda, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, how long you've been playing for, and uh, how things are going with your progress. Yeah, Linda Mays here. Um, I'm from Florida originally, now in Atlanta, Georgia. I started out uh, with uh, lessons at public school for three years in junior high. And after I graduated from high school, I put it down, <laughs> never picked the violin up again until about 30 years later. And when I did, of course, I had to start all over again. And um, I didn't take lessons, but I have uh, joined some community orchestras and uh, other like church ensembles. And I tried to learn from, you know, just participating. But along the way, I've developed a few bad habits. And so I'm trying to get those corrected. Yeah, and I would say you've made some awesome progress. So I was bragging about you last time, and uh, like your left hand's really come along. You're doing a lot of good things there. Well, good, thank you. So how's your how's your progress going this week? Um, it's going pretty good. I didn't get, I, did, I didn't have a chance to get as much practice in as before, but uh, I do have some questions still in trying to do the bow hold. Um, it's better, but my my hand. It starts doing the creepy thing. It starts both starts creeping up, and I guess I have a question about as far as making it stationary. The little gap between the end of the frog here and the leather. Mm -hmm. it does does the thumb rest better there or right in the hole where the frog is right here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's uh it's better if it's actually right in the groove. So um yeah, I would not put it farther towards the leather. Uh -huh. um, yeah, you might just be doing a few things that I can help you out with identifying. Maybe you're just kind of, yeah, like you're saying, creeping up. That could be instrument hold. That could be not enough um, bringing up the bow with the thumb like this. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the bow, the thumb should never be pushing this way, but you want it to support the bow this way as you're pressing down. Okay. So, so you might be wanting to kind of just, you know, give it a little bit more leverage this way. Not necessarily like push hard, but just kind of keep it sturdy up there. Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna help, yeah, just to keep it supported as you're pressing down with the index. So if the thumb is moving around everywhere, mm -hmm. then that tells me there isn't enough support up. Okay. So yeah. definitely don't want any tension and definitely don't want anything pushing this way. So, um, you know, getting on top of the bow is really important, like we've talked a lot about. Mm -hmm. Because at times I would I would try sometimes try to grasp it right here between the end of the frog and the leather. Okay. I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world um, to have it farther up. Although it's it's more definitely more ideal to have you know your your bow grip down farther because uh, as you progress, you want to be able to play at the frog and you don't want your your hand to be way up. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's not so much about finger placement as much as it is application and technique. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if you're wondering which one is better, it, I would say definitely the one closer to the to the button. Okay, right here in the in the right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You don't you don't want it drifting off. You don't want to be like a fiddle player with a bow grip way up here. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I have it here. Yeah, it's not a it's not like a huge deal, but I would. If if you are wondering which one is the right way and better way, I would say is the other the one in the group. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I I did some of that and um practiced the song. Yeah, I took a look at the um the concerto piece you had for the <laughs> for the advanced class, but to learn these techniques that I need to correct these bad habits, I guess I need uh easier songs. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Uh, did you like the class? Yeah. Yes, I did. I did. It's kind of it's kind of nice to see other students playing and stuff. Yeah. 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 I really want to hook you up with uh, uh, Jasmine. I think you guys would be a good team. You guys are right around the same level, and um, she's real nice. Okay. So uh, great. So let's hear you start with a scale and kind of see how that's going. Okay.
Nice shot. I'll tell you that left hand's really come along well. It looks good. Good intonation. Um, you're still kind of a, a little bit far away from, you know, being on top and close to the fingerboard on the E string. So we're kind of coming out just a little bit too much. So, you know, like what I would test is have you go to the very top of that scale and then try to put your fourth finger down in the G string and you probably wouldn't quite reach, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be a little bit short. So yeah, we need to kind of um, tuck fingers more this way um, and extend on the G string. You're just a little bit too, yeah, too far away from the fingerboard, I would say, as you're coming out towards the E string. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, your angles are great. The fourth fingers, good intonation. Okay. So that I would say, um, Keep working on that and then as far as the right hand i uh, kind of just want to emphasize um kind of what you're doing there mm -hmm. so it's it's good i mean you're you're getting a, a good sound not you know too buggy with your um you know uh, bounces or scratchiness but I, I can just sense a little bit less transitioning than i would want mm -hmm. um so more of that yo-yo effect more of that um small muscle effect when you're changing directions uh -huh. So right here, flexibility more. So as you're going up, be thinking more about changing directions. Um, you're just getting like a slight uneasy sound as you're changing directions. You notice that or no? Yeah, yeah. It's slight, but it, it will get it'll get more the harder pieces you play. You might be seeing it with the Bach double. Yeah. So I, I, I was trying to not do as much wrist wrist motion for the transition because last time yeah i thought i thought you said it was too much so i needed to back off and do more of the yeah on. it's not so much the um wrist motion or, or anything actually anything with the wrist um it's more application of the transition so um i give you my yo-yo analogy you know where you have to kind of bring the bow down at the certain momentum so that you can bring it back up smoothly so you're going down maybe a little bit too fast, kind of throwing the yo-yo down and not able to get it back up as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, don't be thinking wrist as much. Be thinking more anticipation, think mm -hmm. more flexibility. As you're getting towards the frog, think more about coming back the other way. Mm -hmm. um, don't transition with the pinky thumb or the wrist. It's all right here. I might want you to do some more index drills, more um, rocking bow drills. Uh, so yeah, like putting your bow up against the strings here and just working on just moving the index. Uh, can you keep doing that, but can you turn like this so I can see what you're doing back here with the thumb as you do that? Uh, the other way. This yes. way. Yes. Aha. Yeah. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. I think we. I think I might have found something. So as you're doing that, so I noticed that you were starting off curved. Uh huh. And as you started doing that drill, I saw this. I saw you have a banana thumb. Okay. So I think that's what's happening as you're transitioning. Yeah. You're thinking index potentially, but then your thumb is tensing. Okay. Yep. How do I keep, how do I keep it from tensing? Yeah, that's the hard part <laughs> when you're used to it. I, I believe you can though. I've see, I saw how great you um, improved your left hand in two weeks, so I'm sure you can. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm noticing like it starts off like this, but then it, it stiffens. Yeah, and like right there, I'm I'm actually seeing you. Um, I'm actually seeing you power that index drill with the thumb a little bit. Uh huh. And that's where um, we want to get rid of that thumb. Um, reliance. That's what's causing that un, un pure sound. So I'm trying to trying to concentrate and see, see how to you, move. The you got index. used to that, right? When you move the index without using the thumb. Yeah, and that's your um. 
So what you just what you just said there tells I, I just saw it and now you just reiterate it with what you said. So definitely that's a bad habit. Uh -huh. um, we've been fixing so many of them. It's it's awesome. We're gonna fix this one. So mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean it looks like you're used to using these two fingers together. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, this, this yeah. is your tran your transitions like this here okay. instead of just like just here. So the, the violin is supporting the bow for you. Uh-huh. So you don't have to um, support it with the thumb or, or change it with the thumb. The, the, the transitions can happen alone with just the index. Better. Yeah. Tough, isn't it? Yeah, so um, don't think so much about how far you're going. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I want to see you do less. That will tell me that you're probably doing it better. Mm -hmm. So even if you can only go this far, but you're only using this, that's what's going to help you fix the habit. If it's, it seems like you're going more for distance. Um, uh -huh. Distance is not really important in this drill at all. It's more reliance. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop the video for anybody out there watching. Uh, me and Linda are gonna continue working on um, all our stuff here. But yeah, anybody that's out there, um, definitely a lot that, that can be said about that thumb and pinky uh, working up against the bow. So it's really great we just identified a bad habit, and a lot of you guys might have bad habits that you need help identifying. So yeah, I really encourage you guys to come to the uh, classes and stuff like that on Tuesday nights. And, uh, and yeah, um, hopefully you'll meet Linda, you'll be, meet me, and we'll be able to identify some of those bad habits you guys might have as well.